Well, good morning, e-learners. Say good morning, class. All right, any questions on the homework before we grade it? Questions on the homework before we grade it? Question was 1 through 34, all page 4. Nothing, no questions, remember this. This will not happen often. All right, I'm going to call out a selected. I'm going to call out, since you already could check the back of the book for your odds, I'm going to call out the even ones. New students, you know, or old students, you know how to do this. I'm going to call this out. You're going to only mark the ones that you got wrong. Only the ones that you got wrong. Only the ones you got wrong. Iffy, 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 bad. Really bad. <laughs> Yeah, I'm trying to find a student. Oh, I like. Come on, girl. Now. All right. These are excellent. Right now, he used all his space. Right, some of you know, but he used all the space as well too. I'm just saying, this is the bad one. This compared to this, what's the difference? It's just answers. Don't. Do that. Show me your work. All right. So the first couple of days, I allow you to get away with murder, right? What? And I will say, okay. So, so this is your standard. Avery does everything perfect, right? And she highlights her answers. So when I call them out, all right, they look great. Um, but just try to show me all the work. Always good. Right. I know. All right. So, are you ready? Now, I would love for you to have a pen in your hand so that you're not tempted to change your hands. And please, when I say this, I don't grade by accuracy, I grade by completion. Did you do your homework? Except for two people, everyone did their homework, right? In a class of this size, I will have one or two kids <clears throat> not reach the standards, which is do your own work, right? You can't do a couple problems. You come to class and you ask, hey, how do you do number 12? Stop the chip chat, please. So I'm going to call out the answers quickly. Not like super quick, but quickly. And we're going to do 2, 4, 6, 8, 10 until I get bored. So I'm going to call out the answer. You're, if you get it right, don't do anything. If you get it wrong, you know, put an X through it. And then at the very end, you're going to count how many you got wrong and put it at the top. All right, here we go. Number two is 49. Number four is 153. Number six is 10.75, right, Chris? Chris emailed me last night about that one. Uh, number eight is 0 0.23. If you put 0 0.23, that's fine as well, too. Number 10 is 12. Number 12 is 13. Number 14 is one. Number 16 is zero. Number 18 is 25. Number 20 is 10. Number 22 is 24. Number 24 is 1. Now for the more challenging ones. Number 26 is 5. Number 28 is 8. Number 30 is 30.5. 32 is 90, 90. And the last one, the answer is, or, or 34, the answer is. Two. Two. Is two. All right. Count up how many you got wrong. Uh, with COVID, I'm not going to have you guys pass papers and everyone touches everyone else's stuff. So, walk by, you're going to drop them in here quickly. This is going to be, oh, actually, wow. I can have one kid. So, walk wow. Just don't touch the paper. All right. Everyone else, while they're doing that, you are going to be copying down your homework. I show you the uh, the slide with the uh, calendar real quickly. It looks like we got a quiz on Thursday, and then you start copying down your homework. And I will hand out the uh, This can all be done in silence, unless there's something. You know, hey, what's going on? Or something important for the class. But there shouldn't be a whole heck of a lot of talking. For those of you who did your homework, good job. You set the standard, 
Now just maintain that standard for the rest of the year, and you'll be good. For those of you that kind of, oops, I didn't do my homework, then fix yourselves. I do accept late homework for half credit. Homework is 15% of your grade. You cannot get an A without doing your homework. I don't care if you get 100% on all the tests, you will get a B, but you'll have to get perfect on all your tests. Um, you do, your do your homework, do your homework, do your homework. All right, Gabby, what's my rule for doing homework in class? Um, minutes, yeah. Well, I don't really need finish, but I mean, you got You have to do everything on this, what I just handed out. If you want to do your homework while I'm teaching, especially when I teach an easy lesson, you'll have to decide whether today's an easy lesson. I don't care, but I do require you to pay attention. I will call on you. You can't say, I was doing my homework, I wasn't paying attention. And you have to fill this out completely, okay? So if you remember, uh, last year, second day of class, it was this lesson. I'm going to give you the same lesson. We're just going to do harder problems. The second lesson of course one was PEMDAS, GEMDAS. So I'm going to give you the same class, order of operations. Problems just get harder, right? There's going to be more stuff going on, more steps. We're good to go to start. Here we go. All right, order of operations. Hey, new kids, raise your hand. Okay, who has, of the new kids, who have not heard of PEM? You can be honest, it's no big deal if you've never heard of it. Who has not heard of PEMDAS? Just the new kids. Did you just raise your hand? <laughs> okay, so by the time we get to eighth grade, ninth grade, we stop calling it PEMDAS, and we start calling it GEMDAS. It's the same darn thing. Just the P is a G for a reason. Jenna, you pay attention. Thank you. Okay, so the objective is, can you use GEMDAS to simplify um, an expression. All right, well, we'll see. Remember, if there's a red square, you're going to take notes. So write this down, box one. Box one. All right? An acronym. Who can give me an example of an acronym? Go. Um, GEMDAS. GEMDAS is an acronym. Good. That's where I'm going with this. Who can give me another acronym? Give me an acronym. Jane. Jane. I'm going to throw things at you. Yes, give me an acronym. Oh, my word. You give me a headache. Go. Uh, LPA is more just the initials, we would say. LTA are initials. In order for it to be an acronym, it's got to be a word. Like you can say it. Ooh, old top would be an acronym. Go. NBA. No! no. You're literally saying the letters. Uh, how about uh, no how about NASA uh, I don't say N-A-S-A -S I say NASA it's a word where the letters are the initials of the organization or the concept whatever it is right that's what an acronym is okay you guys heard you know what it is but CO is an abbreviation uh, NBA are the initials of the National Basketball Association right but we don't say NABA, right? We say NBA, right? But we do say NASA, okay? Uh, ASAP means it's a word. It's not ASA. Well, we do actually do say that, right? Uh, it, well, we say ASAP, okay? Yes, PEM dash slash GEM dash is where I'm going with this. They are acronyms. These letters stand for something, okay? All right. Uh, write this down. So simplify is what we're doing today. Simplify is the process of rewriting an expression, could be numerical, could be variable, into its most simplest form. It's a simpler form. Math, we, I have an, a, a bad thing about this. Math books will say the most simplest form. Isn't that the simplest form? All right, so we're gonna write something in simpler forms. What does that mean? What's five plus three? Is an eight easier to write than five plus three? That is the process of simplifying. You turn an expression into something simpler. Now, last year we didn't do much with variable expressions. This year we will. Last year we only did this, almost, there was one time we didn't. Uh, last year we only, mostly only did this to numerical expressions. This year we will simplify variable expressions too. 
pretty quickly. Are we okay? That's box one. All right, you see this big long honking thing right here? Look up, you see that thing? That's one. You tell me which is easier to write. This is what simplify means. It means you take something that's this long and you write it as easy as form possible. <coughs> Excuse me. So why do we need PEMDAS? I just said that just turn this into one, right? Can't you just do the math and you get one? Jane? <coughs> you need it so you know where you need to start. What do you mean by that? So, um, what like, would happen if you don't know where to start? Uh, you get the wrong answer. It's not that you get to the wrong answer, you get to a different answer. Let me show you an example there. Do you agree that the green and the yellow are exactly the same? Okay, all I'm going to change is the order that I do the math. Okay, what's two plus six? Are you sure? Yeah. Okay. Uh, and then we still have the times three. Eight times three is. Did we do bad math? No. No, we did perfect math. All right, let's do them in a different order. Six times three. Okay, two plus eighteen. Do we have anyone that wants to argue that twenty-four is the same as twenty? course it's Jaden, right? No, you don't get to make that argument. Whoops, because they're not equal. They're not equal to each other. Yet we did good math. You can do good math and get to wrong answers. And I should say different answers, not wrong, because we didn't do anything wrong. So this is a problem with math. <coughs> so the way we get to where we all agree that one of those is the answer is, is we agree as human beings that we will always do math in a specific order. This is the purpose, Jenna. This is the purpose of order of operations. If we don't agree, then we're gonna have some people get 24, some people get 20, and the people that actually make math mistakes get a different number, all entirely, right? So we are going to agree on how to do math. That's what's called order of operations. That's why we use PEMDAS. Write this down, just, just the letters. In box 2A, PEMDAS. PEMDAS is our guide. It will tell us how to do the math. Which do we do first? Which do we do second? So forth and so on. Without the guide, we will get to different answers. Last year, how many times did we use the E? Did we use the E last year? Pretty much not. I mean, we did a little tiny bit. This year, we get to use the E. Last year, we used the P parentheses, but there's other things that act like the letter P this year, which is why we changed the GEMDAS. Okay? All right, so all I wanted you to do is write PEMDAS once. All right, now in box 2B, I want you to write the letters vertically as you see them. This is the guy. This is the guy, this is the guy, this is the guy, this is the guy. This is the, I don't know, the 10 commandments of, of math right here. From now on, if this is not committed to your memory, you need to have it, and we're gonna get complicated math this year. This has to be something that it's part of you. All right, uh, I said I was gonna start calling everyone every single day, so let's not make me a liar this time. All right, uh, Hannah, what's the P stand for? Are you sure? I'm doing a math teacher thing. She's right up until this year. This year we have things that act like parentheses. So we're not gonna call P parentheses we're going to call P grouping. There are things that group numbers together. Parentheses are an example of one of them. Well, I'll get you, Jane. But there are other things that act like parentheses. This is why we switch it to GEMDAS. You can still write PEMDAS, but you need to remember the P means more than just parentheses. I'll show you the examples here in a second. All right, All right. Uh, Amber, what's the E st stand for? OK, it stands for exponents. Amber, can you give me an example of an exponent? How about four squared, right? Have you seen this before? Yeah. This is an exponent, right? If you see something with an exponent, that's the second thing you do. We okay, everybody? Genevieve, what's the M and the D stand for? I like where you're going with that. Math and donuts. Yeah. No. <laughs> Multiplication and division. Okay. I'm going to bear my soul. It wasn't until late in high school that I realized that M and D is not the order that you do it in. 
It's not that you do all the multiplication and then the division. Somehow I never paid attention to this. I used to think, well, it goes to MD, so I must do all the multiplication first and then division. It doesn't mean that. Okay, who's in the know? What order do we do them in? Can we? we go left to right. Multiplication and division, left to right. I'm, I'm going to try to help you guys. You don't do the multiplication first unless it's the first thing on the left. You just go left to right and you knock out all the multiplication and division. Doesn't matter the order. You just go left to right, knock out all the multiplication and division. If there's a whole bunch of division first, great. A whole bunch of multiplication, great. Doesn't matter. All right, Lucia, what's the A and the S? Addition and subtraction. From? Addition and subtraction. Yep, 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 yep. Okay, same thing as the multiplication division. Once again, bear my soul. I didn't know this. I made it through high school. I'm sure I missed a lot of questions because I was not paying attention. I thought it meant you do all the adding first and then subtracting. No. It means when all you have less is adding, subtracting, you go from left to right. Doesn't matter which comes first, subtraction or addition. You go left to right. Okay, uh, can you be honest and someone, new kid, you've never seen this before? Okay, good, you had good teachers. All right, we call PEMDAS now GEMDAS because the P stands for grouping symbols, which means I better, I better tell you what that means. So let's look, box two, I'm sorry, box three. Let's look at the grouping symbols. Now, Jade, you're on. First and foremost, what's the primary grouping symbol? Parentheses are the primary Grouping symbol. Hey, parentheses. P A R P A R E N T H E S I S. Yes. Parentheses though come in different flavors. Different flavors. Prudence, give me a different flavor of parentheses. Brackets. Right. Those are those. I don't know. Rectangular looking ones. Right. We also have what are called. Anybody remember what these are called? Birds. Living. These are called nested parentheses. You know those Russian nesting dolls, right? One inside the other. If you have nested parentheses, you do the inner ones first. Work inside to outside. And then, as we said, oh, this is pre algebra right here. The course you're in. This is what it will look like this year. So, the purpose of the brackets are to visually help you to identify what are the, what, what are the outside ones, what are the inside ones. <clears throat> inside ones are the, we say rounded parentheses or just parentheses, and then the outside ones are your brackets. All right, there's your first flavor. We just call all of those parentheses, by the way. Uh, what's our next flavor of grouping symbols? What do you got? What do you mean? Underneath? Yeah. Well, I've seen use braces in that way, but that was just kind of more of a, a grouping thing. Not, not necessarily to do math in a, a specific order, but saying like when you use set theory, maybe you're saying, oh, these numbers are part of the set. What do you got? Um, it's weird parentheses with like braces. That, those are still, we're going to use those in set when we're listing numbers. How about this? What's that thing? You got it last year. What is that thing, Brecton? It's not long division. Square root. The square root symbol says this. Don't take the square root of two. Don't take the square root of 14. Take the square root of two plus 14. In other words, they want you to do two plus 14 first. Two plus 14. What's the square root of 16? Eight times eight is not 16. Four. Okay. Square root symbols. Right, this is uh, radical symbols is in name. Um, are, are they act like parentheses? They're not parentheses, but they act like it. All right, next flavor. What's that thing? Okay. What is this thing though? The, the fraction bar acts like parentheses. This doesn't say two divided by ten. What does it say? It says 2 plus 3 divided by 10 plus 5. 
right? So it means that it wants you to do two plus three first, then 10 plus five, and then do the division. So fraction bars act like grouping symbols. And the last one that we will see this year, remember what that is? Not, not parentheses. Remember that thing is? Last thing we did, we did positive and negative integers. What? Negative number? That's not a negative number. Gabby? My go to girl let me down. All right. Uh, absolute value symbols. Absolute value symbols. Remember, absolute value, how far are you away from zero? They act like parentheses. They're not parentheses. Those are parentheses. None of these are parentheses, but they act like it. That's why we now call it gemdas. Oh, by the way, there's others, right? But those are the ones we'll see this year. All of those are grouping symbols. Do those first. Who's lost? What part? What's absolute value? If you've never seen it before, I'm going to hold that off until we get to uh, later on this chapter. But you, you, we're not going to see it today okay. for homework. <coughs> okay. Um, I usually make this a note. Maybe it's because I screwed this up when I was your age, but I just want you to recall, you can choose to write this down or not in box 4A, 4B. There are two operations you have to go left or right. The first one is multiplication division. Don't do all the multiplication and division. Just all, when you get to the multiplication division step, you just go left or right. And then 4B is going to say, what box? It's going to say, it's going to say adding and subtracting. If you need to write that down as a reminder to yourself not to do all the multiplication and then the division. I shouldn't even say that. I'm probably putting that, I don't know. I heard to do all the multiplication first. I just did it again. I stopped talking. What are we going to do first? Multiplication or division here? We're going to do division. Because if we go left to right, the first thing that pops up is division, not multiplication. Okay? Uh, let me do it wrong. Uh, two times seven is? Okay. Uh, 14 divided by five is 2.8. 10 divided by 2.8 is a really ugly number. It's wrong. All right, you do multiplication division from left to right. 10 divided by two is five, five times seven is, and 35 divided by five is. It's a nice friendly number is the answer, not this ugly thing over here. I did that quickly, don't, don't panic. I didn't mean for you to write that part down. I just wanted you to, once again, in your brain, just remember you do all multiplication division left to right, no matter what comes first. Same thing with adding subtracting. We don't do seven plus five, and then 10 plus two, and then subtract, we go left to right. 10 plus two is 12 minus seven is, and five plus five is. I just went left to right. Everybody see what I did there? Now, I probably should put equal signs right here. I just noticed I left this up. All right, questions. How does all this work? Yes. Um. I gotta take off the cat because so, no one listen. Yeah. Yes. So, um, like, do you care about like how we present? How about like, we do some and then and then ask that question again, okay? Because like sometimes instead of writing the entire thing down, I'll just no, no, no. I, I know your question. I'm saying let's do some and then then you ask if you still need to ask that question. It's a good question. Though. Our your base question is what are the mechanics? How do I visually make this look on my paper? Okay. So how does all this work? Let's do some. There's two main, I mean, depending upon your teachers you've had in the past, a lot of teachers, which I think what she's talking about, they use this kind of like drop down little line method. Yeah. And they show, you're, you're indicating what two things you're doing something to. Okay, I like that. I generally see by the time you get to algebra one, I don't see anyone doing that. But at this level, absolutely, right? Here's what she's saying. Uh, by the way, Genevieve, what are we doing first here? Um, okay, so. Let's see, we got division, we got addition, we do division before we do addition. So she's saying draw what you're doing. So I'm doing these two together. Uh, the answer is five. We drop down the other stuff. I realize my e-learners can't see what I'm doing here. And then we do that. that. That's called, I don't know. I don't even know if it has a name to it, but it's a perfectly good method. A lot of kids like it. The other method is a cross-through method. We simply cross out what we're about to do. So in other words, 
I got to do multiplication division before adding and subtracting. So I write the answer and then I cross out what I just did. Other kids like doing that. Okay. Drop down what I haven't crossed out. Write your answer. Either method, the one that uh, we just talked about, or this method, either one's fine. Now, the larger question is, well, how much space do I need? Well, this one didn't need much space. A couple tonight for homework numbers. I don't know. Yeah, when you get down around 30-ish, right, in the 20s, low, the high 20s, they're a little complicated. This one's pretty easy. Go ahead, Jackson, talk me through it. Um, what are we doing? Seven times four. Why not four plus six? Because it's um, multiplication. Multiplication and division comes before adding and subtracting. So seven plus seven times four is? 28. 28. Cross out what you just did. Drop down what's left. Therefore, the answer is four. Questions? Uh, that's an easy one, right? All right. Blue means we're going to work together. There are two problems. You know what you're doing? Don't listen to me. Get to the answer. For those of you that need me to work it through, let's work it through. All right. Landon Smalls. Let's go. First one. What are we doing first? Uh, two plus five equals seven. Good job. Two plus five is seven because we always do addition before multiplication, right? Yep. Listen to my words. Because we always do addition before we do multiplication. Because the word is JASTA, JASTAM. What? Because, it, because the acronym is uh, JASTAM, right? That's the acronym? Wait, what's the acronym? JAMDAS. So we're supposed to do what first? It didn't re sound right if I didn't do Jasmine. I changed it. We're supposed to do multiplication and division before adding and subtracting. Yes? Yeah. So tell me what I'm really going to do first. Uh, so five times three. Ah, five times three is? And then five times three is? 15. Okay. So I write a 15, cross out what I just did, drop down what's not crossed out. And it's seven. So. I, I'm not, not that I'm picking on him, but I'm just saying, he did good math. He would have gotten it wrong because he didn't follow Jim Das. Now, that's, that's the worst thing is when you, you really are doing good math and you still get the problem wrong. All right, Landon, one more. You can see yourself. Why are you doing that before subtraction? Because Jim Das. Okay, so what's 12 divided by 3? Okay. Cross out what you just did. And then uh, four x minus one is three. Therefore, the answer is three. Answer is three. Are we okay? We feel confident. Those are the easy ones. All right. You have uh, thirty seconds to do box. What are we on? Six. Go. Thirty seconds is all it should take. Thirty seconds is all it should take. Anybody want need really a lot of help and they want me next to them while they're doing this? Okay. Okay. Nobody needs help. Ace, you got the first one? Yeah. What's the answer? 23. What? 23? Mm -hmm. You guys agree or disagree? Agree. agree. Okay, that's a teacher thing. You know I'm trying to get you to doubt yourself. All right. I'm not showing the steps here. We get the green boxes. I typically just show the answers. You need to see it worked out. Uh, the work there. Amber, middle one, what do you got? You sure? Why? Ten minus five is five. Very good. All right? Notice I didn't put an equal sign. I'm not being a good teacher here. Um, Callie, last one. Uh, three. Three. Good job. Okay. Questions. All right. We need to do more challenging ones. Bring it on. Okay. 
That is Bruce Lee. All right. Do you have any questions? I read the last one at 1.7. Uh, what did you do? Uh, you did 10 minus 1 is 9. 9 divided by 7. Remember, you do multiplication before you do subtraction. No, I, heard, I thought that was 1.7. Oh, I got you. I got you. Yeah. we got to be careful. This is why math people don't like the dot either, because it can be interpreted as a decimal. Right? All right. Why is this one more challenging? Jana, why is it more challenging? Got a lot of numbers. Is it any different than the ones we just did? I mean, relatively speaking, like, is it is it any different other than its complexity? Like, there's more numbers, there's more math to do, more chances to screw it up, right? Uh, but the procedure is still the same. So let's do the procedure. All right, first step. Do we have any grouping symbols? Do we have any exponents? Do we have any multiplication and division? We need to do all the multiplication division left to right. What's the first division or multiplication that you see from left to right? Which is, right? So he does 3 times 5 is 15, cross that out. Is there any more multiplication or division up there? We have to do it. What, what do you see? Multiplication or division? So 8 divided by 4 is? Got a minus sign in front of it, so I'm going to put minus 2. You see what I did there? Okay. For those of you that are comfortable with negative numbers, what does this really say? For those of you comfortable with negative numbers, what does it say? This is this is we're going to talk about this really quickly. So I'm going to do this. What does it say? It says three times five. No, it says negative eight divided by four. What's negative eight divided by four? Negative four. Negative two. <laughs> which is why it says negative two right there. All right, don't worry about that. That just makes sense. Okay. So I'm going to drop down everything that isn't crossed out. And then we got addition, subtraction, left, right. Finish it up. Cross out. Perfect. Good job. Questions? So, okay, you just got more steps, the same stuff. More chances to screw it up, either because your calculations are wrong or you don't drop down the things that you just used. All right. Could you do this by yourself, or you want me to walk you through it? Anybody? Let's do it together, or you want to try it by yourself? Try All right, show. try it by yourself, box seven. Seven. Uh, who speaks foreign language here? What do you speak? German. Why'd you say it in German? Something other than German. What? Latin. Say seven in Latin. Wait, I know this. <laughs> um, what? It's Canadian. Uh, seven A. <laughs> it's a joke because so they time. always say A. In, a in. Canadian is not a language. Uh, Canadians speak French or English. They say they speak English well too. All right, I'm gonna stop talking. Do the math. Get these guys sidetracked. Try to be neat. Oh, we're going to finish right on time. Maybe you good? None of them will be decimal answers, I think. I'm right over there. I think I gave you nothing but friendly numbers. Are you talking about homework? Or are you talking about homework? Homework could be a decimal answer, sure. Mm -hmm. I thought you were talking about this. Yeah. Aiden, you got the first one done? Yeah. All right, what'd you get? What? Four? Four? Yes or no? Mm -hmm. Yes. A bunch of people shaking their head yes. Well, let's see. Multiplication first, one times two is two, six divided by three is two. Cross those two things out, drop down the pluses and the four. Uh, let's see, left to right, four minus two is two, two plus two is four. Sounds good, good job. Was that too quick or are we all right? You've already answered enough, Jaden. No. Oh, question, yes, go. Stretching. Oh, you're stretching, you're stretching. All right, Priscilla, you got the last one? 
Okay. Tell me the steps. First step. Six times four is 24. Second step. 24 divided by 3. This is the more challenging one. And they're literally written next to each other. 24 divided by 3 is, what, 8? Okay. I write everything else. And then I go left to right. 5 plus 8? Five plus eight minus one. That's the answer. Questions. All right. What's the only thing besides exponents that we haven't done? What? We did not do third. Agreed. We have not yet done any grouping symbol. All right, no, you're not going to see today square root. You're not going to see absolute value. Uh, you will see fraction bar, though. So we're going to see fraction bar and parentheses. So I'm skipping box uh, eight. For those of you that already did it, the answers were 18 and it looks like two. All right, let's look at grouping symbols. All right, here we go. Uh, you never saw a problem like this last year. So this is nested parentheses. Check it out. I got brackets. I got rounded parentheses, or just plain old parentheses. Right? Brackets and parentheses, same thing. I need to do the inside ones first. So, Brecton, what are we doing first? Which is? Thank you. All right. So, blue is going to turn into the number four. Notice, I don't get rid of the brackets because I'm only doing what's inside the parentheses. So, the brackets still stay there. Some people will never write brackets. They'll just turn those into rounded parentheses, and that's fine. Did I just confuse anybody? No? All right. Uh, Abby, what's my next step? Okay, so we're on this step right here. You have the choice of either, either in division or subtraction. Typically we do because, right, D comes before S. The problem is those brackets are still there. So we're still on the letter G for grouping symbols. We still have parentheses. You have to get rid of all your parentheses first. So what am I going to do? Which is? Now we can do our division, final answer. Abby, yay, nay? All right. If you're getting hung up on the math, like really the calculations versus what to do next, right? We're okay. You need to know what we do next. Right? I'm, I am doing the calculations a little quick, but I need to make sure you know the procedures, right? Don't be lazy like this dog right here. I need you to do all the steps. You don't need to do them color coded, Avery, if you do not to go out. But uh, the rest of us probably wouldn't do color coded. All right. Ooh, weird one. There's one on homework that looks like this. All right, Hannah, what do you think we're doing first? Uh, Turns out we're actually going to do adding first. She's meant this top numbers right here. Fraction bar is a grouping symbol. We do grouping symbols first. Uh, when you have a fraction, you're going to simplify the top. You're going to simplify the bottom. Well, there's nothing to simplify, just two on the bottom. But the top's a six plus two, which is, Hannah? Which is eight. Now what, Hannah? What do you do first, addition or division? We do, right? We have no more grouping symbols. This is fully simplified. But we have, I mean, fraction bar means division as well as grouping symbol. So we're going to do division, 8 divided by 2. Okay. Therefore, the final answer is questions. Um, Lane, how many were like this on homework? Uh, it's like this. Two? Three of them? Okay. Be ready for that. All right? Uh, I had a question about that. All right. Let's uh, do, we have 25 or 20? 20. 25 or 20. 25. We got five minutes left. All right. Let's, uh, what are you doing on my desk? You look suspicious. Let's do this together. Here we go. One on the left. I'm trying to make sure I called on every one so far. Uh, I have not called on, no, no, I think I've called on everyone. Everyone's trying not to make eye contact with me now. 
Jenna, thank you for volunteering. <laughs> Look at that thing. Tell me what we're doing first. Yes. What are we doing first? Do you see any exponents? Do you see parentheses? We always do parentheses first. The problem is we've got lots of parentheses. These are called the nested parentheses. You've got parentheses inside of parentheses. You always do the innermost ones first. So what are you doing first here? Which is? Just say it. Six. Now here comes the problem. You see where this three is? What's its relationship with the parentheses? Abstract multiply divide. Jenna, is it abstract multiply divide? Okay. You see the three. Do you see what's immediately next to it? Multiply. She's showing me the X symbol. All right. So when you write that that's six, it doesn't turn into 36. It turns into three times six. Everyone take a long look at that. Notice I didn't get rid of parentheses. Why didn't I get rid of parentheses? I did the last time. We had nested parentheses. Because if I get rid of the parentheses, what would it say? It would say 20 minus 36, which is not true because it's 20 minus three times whatever that is, which in this case is six. Anyone lost on that? Look at that. This is where I'll see a problem come homework uh, quiz test time. Do we do subtraction first or do we do multiplication first? The second mistake, kids will say, I don't know, you always say go left or right. Left or right, 20 minus three is 17. 17 times six, and you get it wrong. You have to do multiplication before you do subtraction, unless it's in parentheses. Three times six. Jenna, are you writing any of this down? Right? Or you already did it? I'm saying you got to stay with me. Stay with, stay with the class. And 20 minus 18 is two. All right. Did you guys beat me to the answer? Right. I see this mistake all the time. Ooh, 20, it's just sitting there, it's pretty. And I know I can do 20 minus three really easy, it's wrong. Last one, we'll call it a day. What do you got, Jackson? Um, so, no. Uh, so 10 minus two is eight. We got a fraction bar, so that's division, and it's also a grouping symbol, so we need to simplify top and bottom. The bottom is already simplified, it's just the number four. Top is not simplified, top turns into? Eight. Top turns into eight. Now we got to do division before we do addition. You know, like, it's not division, it's a fraction. What's he talking about? It's a frac fraction means division. Eight divided by four is, therefore the final answer is three. All right, where do we look, where do we stand? We feel confident or not confident? All right, uh, this is the first day of normal schedule. That means your last third day is student advisement. You got 55, zero minutes to do homework. I'm not saying you always have to do your math homework. Some of you probably have it done right now, right? Mm -hmm. Others of you will be doing your math because it's always that stop packing up and listen, okay? Uh, if you're doing homework, first and foremost, in student advisement, if your student advisement teacher allows it and you have a question about math, ask them first. If that doesn't work, then you ask the teacher, can you come see me? I'll be in this classroom and I go see the math teacher. I, I absolutely 100%. Let's let me help you so that you're not home and you got 10 problems that, that are all wrong or you didn't know what you're doing. Okay, questions? All right, Chase, you're the only one that doesn't have student advisement. So, did you already do your homework? Uh, no. Okay. <laughs> it is easy. Okay, uh, pack it up and get out of here. Caden, did you destroy my tape? No. You gotta be smarter than the tape, Caden. Come on. I'm not smart. <laughs> yes, you are. All right, e-learners, if you guys have any questions.
Uh, make sure you email me. If not, I will see you guys tomorrow.